Hi everyone, so today I'm hoping that I'll be able to fix an issue that we're all kind of running into if we have the 2017 Lincoln MKZ, maybe even some older Fusions, uh, where the original 3G modem that was installed is no longer operable. So right now, if you go to Ford or Lincoln, what they're saying is that they're no longer replacing these at the moment due to some issues they've run into with the programming. I uh, found a couple guys that are very knowledgeable over on Cyan Labs uh, forums, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to pull this off. So today I'm trying to go ahead and swap in a 4G modem that I got. This, I believe, is out of a uh, Ford Escape. Let's see if that can focus. You can see part number here, um, and that's matching exactly what's posted on one of the forum posts. So. I'm gonna try and see what this process entails and see if I can pull it off, but what I wanna be able to do is use the Lincoln Way app, uh, which would be similar to the Ford Pass app, where you can then unlock and start your car with your phone. So today that's what I'm gonna try and do. Let's see how to do it. All right, so on the MKZ and the Fusion, uh, to locate the modem, we need to go into the trunk. So I'll go ahead and do that. Pop the trunk open and it's actually located over here behind the uh, trim here. So what I'll do is pop out this cover here, which is gonna have these two little kind of knobs, spin these off, set them aside, pop this apart, and then I'll go ahead and pull this out. A couple more knobs over here, one on this side, and then there's actually a pin up here right in this area, try and adjust the camera, it's visible. So right over here, there's a push pin that we need to remove. Uh, there we go. So this one here, we'll pull this down and then we'll be able to pull the entire trunk liner over and out. So I'll also remove the liner here and give us some more access. So we'll do that real quick. All right, I do want to talk about this a little bit here. Um, here is the modem. This is the 3G modem that is no longer in service. So I'll hold up the 4G modem next to it. You'll see there's quite a big difference here in the size between the two. So much larger, but it does have the same connection. So you'll see this, this smaller plug is not actually used on either of them. And we do have an antenna there, the original antenna but we will not be reusing that. I do have an aftermarket kind of generic 4G antenna. So I'm going to try and plug it in and then kind of route the wire up and try to put it up underneath the rear deck here. So it kind of sits above the rear shelf. So I don't know how much of that I'll show. I will show the actual antenna itself here in just a moment, but we, to my knowledge, we cannot reuse the factory antenna because this is a 3G antenna. So. I'm gonna go ahead and for now, probably not even mount anything because I wanna see if I can get everything functioning before I go through all of that trouble. So I'll just go ahead and unplug this here and plug in the new 4G one and then we'll see what it takes to get this programmed. So we'll jump over to the computer here in just a moment. All right, so this is gonna be how I test this. I do have the 4G modem sitting here. Uh, again, it's not mounted. I do wanna make sure that I can make this all work before I commit to pulling everything out and routing it. So, as I said, I do have an aftermarket 4G antenna that's here. This is a Bingfu, I believe is how you say it. It's only like a $10 antenna, and this was on Amazon. So, you can see pretty thin uh, double-sided tape on the back side. So, I will try and route this up and hide it up underneath the rear glass somewhere. Uh, but for testing purposes, I'm just going to leave it like this and see what happens. So, now we'll jump over to the computer and see what we can pull off. So one other thing I did forget to mention is I'm going to be doing a firmware program on or update on this module. So I will need to have the car hooked up to a battery charger, which is what I'm about to do. Uh, just real quick off camera, that's what I'm going to do up here. So if you see in this moment that the hood has popped open or anything, that's why. I just need to have the battery uh, maintaining a certain voltage. So we don't want to drop below and have some issues or corrupt the firmware update. So I'll do that real quick and then we'll jump into the car. So sorry for the little uh, step back here, but we will be doing firmware update. I'm going to be using Forescan, which is a beta release of Forescan, and an OBD Link EX. So it is a USB uh, adapter for Forescan and the beta release, which allows us to do firmware updates. So three things that we kind of need to have in place, but 
we'll jump into it. All right, now that I'm in the car, I have four scan pulled up. I have not turned on the ignition. I have my OBD Link EX down here plugged in. And what I need to do is connect to the car, but I want to load or not load any saved profile. So I'll say no if it prompts me to load anything. So I'll go ahead and turn the power on. Try and turn my audio all the way off. I'm gonna turn off anything that's not necessary. So, turn that off. So I'll go ahead and then on Forescan, go ahead and try to connect to the car. And then like I said, we don't want to allow it to use any saved profiles. So when this pops up, we just wanna say no. And then I'll select that I'm a 2017 and go, with, go forward. So again, this is a beta release of Forescan. Hopefully this is picking that up. It is a beta release, it's 2.4.6 beta release. And you will need one of these betas to do any sort of firmware upgrades. So do this at your own risk. You, there's always some inherent possibility of messing up the car uh, or messing up the update on that module. So we will always try to be as careful as possible. That's why we wanna make sure that we have the charger hooked up and we have good voltage here. If this drops too low, then it may cause issues. So when this loads, we'll move on. All right, now that I have the car connected, we can actually see the TCU is being recognized and you see this same part number that was on the modem itself. So this HJ5T14087-UF, this is exactly what's rec like used in the forum posting. The current calibration is matching the part number here, but we can see there is a more recent release of this as well as the strategy. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try to do an update on this inside of Forescan. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and come over here to calibration and programming. And then we will find TCU here on the left side. Go ahead and see firmware update. And then I will go down and click the play button. This is where it says we need to make sure we're connected with the battery charger, we're using a good cable, not a wireless adapter. We do not want to risk having any issues there, communication loss. Uh, we also want to make sure that this computer does not go to sleep or we have good uh, charge in this battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my brightness a little bit, but I'll go ahead and click okay. It tells me to turn the ignition off, so we'll do that. Click okay. And now we can see this is the available up here being the most recent one that is released. So we'll go ahead, you can see this dash U in. We'll do download here in the bottom left. And this will allow it to download, I believe it's downloading from the Ford servers. Uh, if the Ford servers are down, I think then it uses the Forescan teams kind of repository for this, but we'll go ahead and download these and see what happens. All right, so now we have all these little green dots on the side here. We should be able to just go ahead and hit program. So turn on the ignition, but do not start it. So my foot will not be on the pedal. And we'll click OK. And it's estimating about an hour to do this. So we'll see if it really takes that long. In my experience, it will take a pretty long time in general to do these updates. So I will come back when it's done, but we'll go ahead and click okay. And it will begin. So car's doing some weird stuff, but should be good to go here once it finishes. Okay, so it did just finish doing the update. The entire time that it was updating, my heads up display was flashing until the last maybe Oh, five to seven percent. And of course the OBD link down here was flashing the entire time as well. But this is exactly how it looked as it came up. Looks like I'm getting a warning for the battery even though it's hooked up to a charger and I do have uh, over 12 volts here. So it does say that it's finished successfully. Uh, and again, just under an hour. So one thing that I do already, I already did was I deleted my uh, car from the Lincoln Way app. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. We don't want to have that in installed anymore on the phone um, or in the account. So 
Now I do have a document that I'll, I'll link here or have a screenshot to kind of show what I was reading through. But what I need to do now is I'll probably try and start the car. And I will do a sync reset as well as I will look at some of the data for my uh, module here. So to do the sync reset, we'll just go ahead and settings and then go over here in general and do a master reset here. So resetting to default and then back here on Forescan, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to configuration and programming. Uh, we'll go actually to this read PID, which is the third tab down. Change this to TCU. And we'll see what values we're getting. So we see it does say that it's waiting for, author for the authorization signal from the uh, Ford servers. So I do need to double check. Uh, I do have some information, like I said, in a PDF document that will kind of walk through what the process is here. But I do need to make a couple changes. I'll just check that before here in just a second. Okay, so I've got the modem now mounted over here in the top of my trunk. I just used a single Torx screw. Uh, it's in there pretty good. It's just kind of hanging onto that bracket. Here's the uh, new replacement antenna. The old one is not being used, and then the factory plug. So I did take this and kind of, it's gonna be hard to see, but I went up inside this channel. I pulled down the top of the trunk liner here. So I pulled this down, and then I kind of just ran it through. So there is a hole back here that I kind of poked through on. So hopefully this is kind of visible, uh, but I just kind of stuck the antenna up inside this big square cutout. That way it's directly underneath the kind of cloth parcel shelf. All right, so this is day two. I did have some other issues that I originally recorded, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and see if this new process works. Um, so I do need to go in and actually make some changes. You can see this is the same as what I saw before. Um, thanks to F-150 Chief on Cyan Labs, I've been talking to him. He's trying to help me fix this, but everything here is what you should see once you uh, do your update, but we do actually need to go in and make a change to the as-built. So we'll go ahead and stop here, go over to this little kind of chip icon, and then find the TCU again. Um, going to the as built. We'll open this up. And the suggestion is to go ahead and make this very top value B100 and try to write this. Okay, all done successfully. So that should be clearing out the VIN, is my understanding. So let's go see if there's any change in our PIDs. Our cell signal is very high. This says waiting for authorization. So this might update here in just a moment. Cell signal went to zero. See if anything else changes here. I believe this value should go to unprovisioned, or one of these two should go to unprovisioned. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera and then wait and see if this happens. We'll I'll be back once I figure something out. All right, so I am just gonna go ahead and try this. Uh, I believe that this was supposed to say unprovisioned or factory mode, but it, it hasn't yet. So I'm gonna just go ahead and try this the way that I have everything. I did remove the app and reinstall the app as well after removing my car. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add mine. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the camera, open the door and capture the bin. Just because that's gonna be the easiest, very quick. So this is no searching. It wants to use Bluetooth, okay. We'll just say MKZ, kind of trying to keep everything here. So 
So, vehicle's been added, I got the email, get started. I do have the embedded modem option now. This was not originally on my app. So I'm gonna go ahead and try activate vehicle and I should get a pop-up on my screen on the car. We'll see if it happens. Okay, so I did just click it again and it, I think the issue was I didn't have good signal. These two values were not filled in yet. I did click activate on here and I immediately got the pop-up on the screen. So I'll go ahead and allow it here. Say got it to accept it. And we will see. Try and refresh this. Now this says authorized. This changed for us. Location and data sharing enabled. I got the authorized message from the Lincoln app. So I do believe this was taking a minute just because I had poor service here where I'm at. So I'm going to go ahead and close the app, try and open it again. There we go. So I do have my buttons now. Uh, I guess we'll see if it actually works. Try and lock it. And it worked. Okay, that is great. So looks like everything is working. I'll try and do a start on here. It says it can take up to 30 seconds. We'll see what happens. And it just started so that is phenomenal so making that B100 change is what all I missed on the previous uh, steps here so everything seems to be working now Let's see if I can go to vehicle I can see my fuel level so this is functional this is great so thanks again for F-150 chief helping me out here this is phenomenal I'm very happy that that's all I needed to change